Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to look at another closure property, which is one that I get asked about a lot because the definition is actually quite hard to understand for a lot of people. So we're going to let h be any function that takes strings. So remember, sigma star is all strings. So from any string to any string with a particular property we'll talk about in a second. Then we're going to let l be a regular language, so any regular language. And we're going to let this language h of l be all the strings h of w where w was an original string in the language. So take every string in the original language, apply h to it, whatever that means, and we're going to get that resulting language. And what we want to know is that uh, if l is regular, then h of l is regular. So I can't just let this be any function. We're going to restrict the function such that if we have a string w1 through wn and we want to apply h to it, it's equal to the idea of applying h to a single character and then concatenating that same thing with all of the other h's. So for example, so let's just say that we have uh, h of 0 equaling a h of 1 equaling b, then let's just say if I wanted to know what h of, or maybe b a to make it more interesting. So let's look at h of 1, 0, 1. Well, by the property, it says that that is the same thing as h of 1 concatenated with h of 0, concatenated with h of 1, and let's just now copy and paste from what we have up here. So h of 1 is b a, h of 0 by definition is an a and then the h of 1 at the end is another b a. So this property is something that we call the homomorphism property. So where does this actually come from? Morphism just means changing one thing for another one and homo is just this idea of splitting the string into uh, individual parts like this. Okay, the th thing to keep in mind though is that the homomorphism property says that the if we apply h to a single character, the resulting thing could still be an entire string. So it's not like it's one character going to output one character. It could be a whole string. But we can focus on a single character at a time. Okay, well this says show that if l is regular, then h of l is regular. And what we know from what we've done before is that if L is regular, there's a DFA or NFA for it. And what we want to do, so what we want is to make a DFA or NFA for H of L, because that's what it says. We want to show that it's regular. We need to make a DFA NFA for it. Okay. Well, how do we do that? Well, Let's think about what a transition looks like in the, in the original DFA or NFA. So let's just say that we had a transition that looks like this. It, so this is in the original, I can say without loss of generality, DFA. Because DFAs and NFAs are equivalent. Okay, well let's just say we have a transition like this. Well, let's think about what the homomorphism property actually says. It says that we can break up a string into each of the characters and apply h to each of the individual characters. Well, then that means that if we're trying to read h of a particular string that we're interested in, then when we, let's just say we take this transition, then by the homomorphism property, we want to go from this state to this state while reading h of a. So in the and the modified, it could be a DFA or NFA, just the modified machine, what we want to see is something like this, where we have H of A on the transition, because we want to, because the homomorphism property says that you can break up the string into each individual character and apply H to the, of each of the original characters. But if we're looking at a DFA here, we're processing things one character at a time anyway. So we want to go from this state, the same state, the same pair of states, but now reading h of a. So this is the right idea, but the main problem, as I was saying before, is that 
like this example right here, the result of the h function could be an entire string. And I can't have an entire string on a single transition. So there is an easy way to repair this though. So let's say that this is state q and q prime. This one's also q and q prime. So this is what we want to do. But how can we actually do this? So what we can do is we can have the state q here in the state in the state q prime over here. But now let's just read each of the individual characters along the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bunch of intermediate states right here. And along the way, let's say that we have x1, x2, whatever, xn minus 1, xn. But the totality of each of these, of these transitions is going to be whatever the h function says. So let's just uh, clarify several things. So these states in the middle are new states. So they're, they're not going to ever be used again. They're only uh, here for this purpose. And what we should also clarify is that if we concatenate all of the x characters together, then that is the same thing as h of a. So, and this totally makes sense, because if we want to do the, from this state to this state, well, we want to read the h of a string, but we can't necessarily because it might not be a single character. It may be a whole string. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a whole bunch of states in the middle where the totality of them is h of a. So, and why does this actually work? So we should always be thinking, why does this actually work? So let's think about what the DFA did on a string. So it went through a bunch of states, maybe took this transition or something, and then went to the final state or whatever state it ended in. Well, let's think about now what it's doing here. If we follow the same set of, uh, the sequence of states that we go through, the same computation, well, let's just say we take this transition. Well, then that means that we need to take this transition, th this, uh, this line of transitions right here, because we want to appear at the state q prime here, and the only way of doing that is to go through this particular path. There may be another transition, but if we're to apply going from q to q prime reading a, we need to take this set of transitions over to here. But that means that we're going to be reading h of a, right? So then that tells us that if, we're, if we look at each of the transitions that we did, we're going to read the h corresponding character or string, and we're going to concatenate them all together because we're just going to do a bunch of these set of transitions all in a row. But that corresponds to what the homomorphism says because the homomorphism, you can break up the string into each individual character and apply h to it. So in the logic for the reverse um, proof in that if you get a string that's accepted by this machine, do you get one here? And the idea is very similar because if you go from this state to this state via this sequence of transitions, then it must have corresponded to some transition between these two states, but then that corresponds to a character that you had in the original DFA, and then you can reconstruct a string, not necessarily a unique one, but a string that this one accepts. So if this thing accepts something, then this one does. And if this one accepts something, then this one also does. Cool. So this tells us that regular languages are, quote, cl uh, closed under homomorphism. Because if you have a regular language and apply the homomorphism to it, then the result is regular because we can exhibit a NFA in general for it, and because DFAs and NFAs are the same, or equivalent I guess, then we can say that H of L is in fact regular. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find this out a different way. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel, as well as comment. Commenting really helps with the growth of the channel. Please comment on the videos. If you want to support this channel more, you can do so via Patreon. Bunch of links in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.